Good morning and welcome to this chilly morning, Wednesday, the 19th of May. Um, we uh, didn't get snow like Edmonton did last night here in Wainwright, but uh, it sure feels like it might. It is really cold today, so I've got my shawl and a young lady named Lola in my parish in St. James in Halifax gave it to me as a going away gift. And it, it's a very warm little thing and it reminds me of her hugs. She was a great little hugger. So it's hugging me today and keeping me warm. Um, this morning, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about um, sort of a thought that's going through my head with respect to where we are as a society. Um, this morning, I, I go on to my phone before I do anything else just to check emails in case there's been a prayer request or something before I begin praying. And as I sometimes do, I get sidetracked by Facebook, which I shouldn't because it's just... There are times for Facebook and first thing in the morning isn't. However, today was a good day for that because a parishioner, uh, Marianne from St. Mary's in Edgerton, posted something on her, her page about the teenage brain, <laughs> talking about the prefrontal co cortex and that it's not fully developed until the mid-20s and, and how young people think and how sometimes we as adults assume things of them that they're not actually physically capable of doing. We're expecting them to be grown-ups when they're physiologically and biologically not there yet. And how we need to acknowledge that and and figure out how how can we speak to them and how can we model um, what it is to be a, an appropriate adult um, when when they're still learning and they're still developing and still still not there yet. It made me start thinking about where our society is and, and maybe if we looked at society as, as a growing person. I do this often with churches to talk about where they are in their patterns. Is it a young, a 50-year-old church that's feeling its oats like a young teenager or is it a 150-year-old church that's, that's feeling its, its sense of being an adult or as in Nova Scotia where churches can be well for 200 years old and maybe those are the mature, wise elders of the church world. Um, maybe our society is the same way. There's been a lot of conversation about how how we aren't doing things right, that we haven't done things right, that we you know we need to apologize for things in the past. And it's a topic for a different day as to whether or not we should apologize. I think we always are called upon to apologize even when we're not the one who did something wrong, but we are the inheritors of the wrongdoing. But this sense of, of acknowledging something and and being aware of it and how do we deal with that. We have we are living in a society that's that's changing so fast. Um, we are acknowledging things and recognizing that we have made such incredible mistakes. Uh, a case in point right now that I'm really really struggling with is what's happening with the accusations against uh, top-ranking members of the military. Um, is it right that anyone ever do anything to physically or sexually assault or um, threaten or make uncomfortable another person? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Is it all right that after 32 years something comes up, is brought forward because we're now in a in an atmosphere where it's encouraged to bring things up. Is it okay to ruin someone's life because of something that they may or may not have done 32 years earlier, which would have put them at a fairly young age? I don't know. I don't know. I think that our media is, is taking advantage of the need to talk about something other than the pandemic. And I am concerned that that lives and careers and families may be, may be hurt um, irreparably because of this business, that this feeling that we need every single thing to be made accountable and public. I am 49 years old, I'll be 50 in the end of June, and if I was made to be accountable for every single mistake I made you know, 32 years ago, I wouldn't be able to move forward things I've said, the things I've done, I, I didn't know better then. And I do now. I would never say the things or do the things or make comments or, you know, 
even think things the way I did when I was 17. Um, but we need we need to acknowledge that mistakes make mistakes are made, and then how do we move forward in reconciliation and forgiveness without becoming vindictive? This article that I read um, that Marianne shared talked about the the need we have as adults to be patient with our teenagers and young adults because they are physiologically not able yet to understand what they will in 15, 20 years, maybe even just a few years from now. They're making decisions based on emotion and impulse rather than making decisions based on rational thought. And we know now, as we didn't know 30 years ago, maybe even 20 years ago, that the decisions that we make, the actions that we take at 17, 18, 20, 21, 22, um, they're in their they're instructed by what we have to work with. And if our brain isn't fully fully functioning yet, fully formed, then they're not they're working with lack of information, so to speak. And that there is that's an important thing to think about. Now I am in no way suggesting that we that we stop and say there is no need for accountability. If a seventeen year old who has a driver's license and knows it is illegal and wrong even if it's an impulse, but they know that they know when they get their driver's license that they are not allowed to drive under the influence. And they know intellectually that they are not legally old enough to drink. If they drink or do drugs and get behind the wheel of a car and they kill someone, they will be legally responsible. They will be held accountable for what they have done. It will impact the rest of their lives because they will have to pay the consequences of what they have done. Would they make this, the same decision 10 years later? Probably not. But in that moment, they made a decision that caused consequences that they now have to live with. As a society, we made decisions long ago, 10 years ago, 20, 40, 60 generations ago, that we're uninformed, that we're impulsive, that we're not correct, that have had long-ranging, sometimes small impacts, and sometimes the magnitude of the impact is still unknown. We, as a as as a as a community, as a as a as a society, made decisions based on the the formation that we had the the communal brain that was still growing and is still continuing to grow and form based on the way that we were thinking and the information that we had. I'm giving the benefit of the doubt here to people that they made the best decision they could given the complete circumstances that they had. A lot of those decisions have had dire consequences that we are now, should be, are and should be responsible for dealing with. All of the things the church has done regarding residential schools, yes, we need to be accountable for those things. We need to recognize that what we had, what we that, that what happened, what was done in the name of the church, was wrong. We need to be accountable for that. We needed to apologize. We have, we continue to apologize. We need to be able to find ways to now pr participate in the healing process as we are invited to do so. We need to not impose our thoughts on what that whole healing process might look like. We need to be open to stating that we acknowledge and accept the consequences of the work that we did, of the harm that we caused, and we will do our part to the best of our ability to, to repair those relationships as long as the other is willing to walk into relationship with us. And if they are not, we accept that. We acknowledge that we cannot force ourselves upon anyone, even if we are trying to, to fix or repair or reconcile something. That is also a consequence, the fact that we may indeed not be able to repair or reconcile those relationships. There are so many things that we, as adults, as an adult society, need to be able to acknowledge. 
our land acknowledgments now recognizing where we stand that it is not ours as colonial a colonial society to come in and claim but it was ours to, to be welcomed to ours to to share with others ours that we now need to say we acknowledge who you are who you were who you are to become and we 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 ask that you allow us this the privilege the gift of walking with us allowing us to walk with you there are things that our government has done separate from you know, indigenous ideas or things the things we have done with people our understanding of gender fluidity of how how do we change i don't believe that who i was 25 or 30 years ago when i was in high school i knew some people who would net what we call gender fluidity now we're we're working with that and dealing with that and trying to discover who they were some of them i thought were crazy some of them i thought were flamboyant some of them i probably didn't even notice because i was a teenager and i was completely focused on myself do i apologize for that yes can i go back and change that no but i can change me today i can begin to become more aware and educated and enter into conversations with people who are willing to share with me their experiences and who are willing to understand that mine i have mine as well because the gender fluidity conversation this idea about that the people you know could be straight or gay they could be queer trans bi you know they could be questioning what their gender identity is all of these things does not preclude heterosexuality or people who are cisgendered we are a part of the conversation it is it needs to be an inclusive conversation recognizing all people because as soon as we separate out someone who's different than us we become us and them we create the other and god did not create other god created creation all of god's children regardless of gender fluidity or genderfulness or gender identity or gender questioning regardless of indigeneity or ethnicity or cultural backgrounds god created all of us and god created us to continue to grow and develop and to continue to allow time for our frontal cerebral cortex or whatever it is as a society as countries as communities to continue to grow that we might learn and continue to grow into the people God is calling us to become. So let's be patient with one another. Let's listen to that young man. If you'd like to read the article, I shared it on my Facebook page as well. So just go to my page and, and find it. And it's a letter a young man is writing to his parents. Please be patient with each other. Be patient with yourself as we develop our societal brain, as it continues to grow and we continue to discover who we are called to be, and as we continue to deal with the consequences of who we have been in the past. Have a great day. Stay warm, stay safe, stay home. If you have to go out, wear your mask, and continue to pray for all those who are on the front line. God bless, and I'll see you tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel on Thursday.